Our lesson for today will be looking at chemistry 1503. We are going to focus on assignment number 2, 2021, question 13 to 16 that deals with the limiting reagent, excess reagent, theoretical yield, and percentage yield at the start. This is the actual question. The scenario says, consider the following balanced reaction. 2NaOH, sodium hydroxide, plus carbon dioxide. It will yield sodium carbonate and water. We have three moles of sodium hydroxide and four moles of carbon dioxide are allowed to react according to the above reaction. Then it says answer question 13 to 16 below for this reaction. The first question says which reagent is the limiting? Surely this is the third or fourth lesson I record based on this chapter. So the first thing that I normally do when answering this question and advise all my students to do so is to tabulate. Remember a limiting reagent is a reagent that is used up completely in a chemical reaction to stop the reaction and we need a balanced equation in this case we are provided. So line up the reactants. Remember between the two this is where we are going to find our limiting reagent. There's no way that our product can be the limiting reagent. And also remember that the limiting reagent is that reagent that is used up completely to stop the reaction. Meaning that in order for us to get more of the products, we need to react the two. So if one of the two is used up completely, it's finished, then the formation of the two will eventually stop. So here we want the substance that will actually stop the reaction. So looking at our option, this can possibly be the answer and also this one, but there is no way that our product can be the answer. And most of the time we do find that the chemical reaction does have a limited reagent. So also this one, we're not going to count it. And this one, it is impossible for us to have both of them as it's actually close to being impossible for us to get that sodium hydroxide and carbon dioxide be the limiting reagent. Normally one of them will be the limiting reagent, the other one will be the excess reagent. But I'm not saying it is impossible, it is actually possible, but it is very rare to find a situation like that. So what I'll do, I'll simply put my first reactant here and then my second reactant here and then from the balanced equation we saw that we have two here and then since there is no number here there's no number here simply means that we have one so we can just put one here let me actually use a different color for carbon dioxide I normally encourage my students to follow the steps to calculate the limiting reagent. The first step, you have to calculate the number of moles using n is equals to m over m. If you are given the mass of each reactant reagent in grams, you have to convert that mass using this equation. n is equals to m over capital letter m whereby this is the number of mole, this is the mass in grams that will be given, then this is the molar mass that we find on the periodic table to find the number of moles. And I normally say this will be the first number of mole we use this equation. The second step, we have to find the second number of mole using the mole ratio. The equation to calculate the mole ratio or to use mole ratio is N1 over N2 equals to R1 over R2. I'll simply explain this equation in detail as we move to step number two. This equation will assist us to calculate the second number of moles.
So let us attempt to follow these two steps. Let us start with step number one. We cannot really perform step number one because we are given the number of moles. We are given three mole of sodium hydroxide and four moles of carbon dioxide. So I can say we are covered with step number one because we have three mole of this and four mole of this. So we can just go straight to step number two. Looking at step number two, we said that we have to perform mole ratio to find the second number of moles. I said the equation it's n r1 instead of n1 let us put n of sodium hydroxide since we are on the column of sodium hydroxide the sodium hydroxide will be on the numerator level will be on top over the number of mole instead of n2 let us put co2 equals to let us look at the mole ratio mole ratio is this number r1 of the first reactant it's 2 over R2 that is for carbon dioxide it's 1 and then the next step we are still looking for the second number of moles of sodium by the way before we continue do know that this and this is the first number of moles for both um, reactants so what we do now where we see this we are going to substitute by the number of moles the first number of moles which is 4 equals to 2 over 1 is simply 2 and then from here we multiply both sides by 4 we just want to get rid of that 4 so this will get rid of this and then we have number of moles of sodium hydroxide it's equals to 2 multiplied by 4 we have 8 mole this is the second number of mole of sodium hydroxide from here we can conclude which one is the limiting reagent which one is the excess reagent but I normally encourage my student to do the very same thing with um, the second reactant so since this is the column of carbon dioxide we are going to put it on the numerator level over the number of moles of sodium hydroxide we look at the mole ratio we have 1 over 2 go ahead and substitute where we see the number of mole of sodium hydroxide we don't even look at the second number of mole first number of mole which is 3 so we put 3 here equals to 1 over 2 then we multiply both sides by 3 this will get rid of this and then we have CO2 equals to 3 over 2 which is 1.5 more and then by the way these are the second number of mole this one and this one the second number of mole we have used the mole ratio now let us go back to our steps looking at the step step number three what we have to do now we have to determine the limiting reagent and the excess reagent based on these conditions if it happens that the first number of mole is less than the second number of mole just know that this will be the limiting reagent if it happens that the first number of mole is greater than the second number of mole just know that it will be our excess reagent so what we have here now we have to conclude we have to compare so we can see three against eight this is the first this is the second so you can see that the first number of mole is less than the second number of mole 8 is greater than 3 and then going to our next reactant we can clearly see that 4 
4 is greater than 1.5 mole. So we have first number of mole being greater than the second number of mole. So in this case, we can see that our limiting reagent is this one. Then this one will be the excess reagent. So going to our options. This is the limiting reagent. Option number one. Our next question says, what is the maximum number of moles of sodium carbonate that can be formed? So by the time this is used up completely and the chemical reaction stops, we want to know how the maximum number of moles of this do we have. How much of this do we have? So in order to do that, it is actually the step whereby we calculate the theoretical yield. Theoretical yield is the composition of the product formed um, by the end of the reaction. Now we are going to use the equation is the product that you are looking for, the number of mole of the product that you are looking for over the number of mole of limiting reagent. The ratio of the product, the ratio of the limiting reagent. So to do so, we are going to say the number of mole of sodium carbonate over the number of mole of uh, sodium hydroxide. The ratio from the balanced equation, you can see that sodium carbonate, we have 1 over 2. So one over two, and then the next step, you have to be very careful. We don't substitute by the second number of mole, but we use this, the first. Always use the first. So we have three, it's equals to one over two. And then from there, we multiply both sides by three. And then we have sodium carbonate it's equals to it's 3 over 2 which is equals to 1.5 mole so this is the maximum number of mole of sodium carbonate we have that will be formed after the reaction has stopped so option number two is the correct option We go straight to question number 15. It says how many moles of excess reagent remain unreacted. Now we said limiting reagent, it is used up completely, meaning that the other substance will be left after the chemical reaction. It simply means that if the reaction stops and we add another limiting reagent, it simply means that the reaction will continue because we have access there is something left of the substance that is in access during the chemical reaction so we want to know after the reaction have stopped how much of um, carbon dioxide is, is left because we said that carbon dioxide is our excess reagent so how do we calculate that it is very much simple to calculate the number of moles left of the excess reagent what you have to do you should know that the equation of number of left number of moles left is equals to number of moles one minus number of moles two sometimes you say number of moles left is equals to the total number of moles or the initial number of moles minus the number of moles reacted so left the number of moles that is left we look at the first number of moles 
we have 4 and then we look at the second number of moles we have 1.5 and you should know that it is impossible for it to be negative so we have 4 minus 1.5 we get 2.5 more left of carbon dioxide so looking at our option we have option number four let us jump straight to question number 16 it says if the actual mass of sodium carbonate produced was 0 0.5 mole what is the percentage yield of sodium carbonate to calculate percentage yield we are going to okay calculating percentage yield we are going to okay percentage yield it's equals to the actual yield over the theoretical yield multiply by 100 and then the answer will give you in percent I want you to understand that when we look at the theoretical yield this is actually the theoretical yield this one it has to do with the maximum production of our product this will be the theoretical yield and then the actual yield most of the time you will be given this will be the actual yield and you should know that the theoretical yield it's always greater than the actual yield so if you forget this equation you should know that it's always a small number divided by a big number it is not vice versa otherwise if you take the big divide by small multiply by 100 you will get a number that is more than 100 percent if you get anything that is more than 100 percent you should know that your answer is wrong so in this case we are looking at 1.5 and 0 0.5 you can see that it will actually be this divided by this not other way around and by the way this is the actual this, this is the theoretical and then we are given in more so this equation this equation it's applicable to when you are given the mass in grams of the product talking about the actual yield if it is given in grams or it is given in mole it is possible for you to find the percentage yield so percentage yield it's equals to 0 0.5 1.5 multiplied by 100 we are going to get um, 33.33 so this is the percentage yield even if you convert you can convert this into grams and use this equation we are still going to get 33.3 percent so going back to our options the correct answer should be option number three which is option three it's this one so that's it for this lesson video the next lesson video will be looking at other questions which are requested by students this is Bakula SJ. Thank you very much.